I want to bring in our panel to discuss Jonas Ferris. He's the founder of Max Funds. David Bonson is the founder of the Bonson Group and retail expert Aaron Sykes. Uh, David, let me start with you again. Uh, potentially up to 40,000 workers over a period of time, $150,000 a job, uh, a $2.5 billion investment. Very enticing. A lot of immediate pushback. AOC taking a victory lap, should she? Well, what happened here today is that corporate welfare was defeated. And AOC taking a victory lap for that drives me as a consumer conservative Republican crazy, because it should be my side that stands against the subsidies, the corporate welfare that this deal represented. It was rank crony capitalism, and so she has every right to take a victory lap. Now, you're never going to hear me say that about AOC ever again, <laughs> but right now, today, she just happened to be on the right side of this issue, not even necessarily for all the right reasons. Sure, sure. She was bigger on the whole wage issue and so forth, but for me, the tax subsidies were a rank giveaway, and that quote from Amazon that we were just listening to was absolutely stunning. This idea that they won't work with us, cooperate in a relationship. What does that mean? There's one thing they have to do. Provide a place that you're going to go do business. It should be even playing field for all businesses. You don't give taxpayer money away to a multi-billion dollar business. It's it wrong. does sound like a really petty uh, move. Uh, but there were conservatives who thought this was a good deal. Uh, you know, I, there were, or at least, at least people who consider themselves conservatives who thought this was a pretty good economic deal and that uh, those forces in New York City against it, that they were making a mistake. Yeah, well, in uh, Southern California, where I spent half my time, there were conservatives that thought it was a good idea to give a whole lot of money to Disney over the years with $40 billion of pre-tax income. And, and the fact of the matter is that we are hurting our brand as conservatives. Everyone says that millennials love socialism so much. I don't believe it. I think they're disgusted by crony capitalism. And the, these deals to these huge companies are symbolically awful just as much as they are substantively awful. So unfortunately, I wouldn't say any conservatives supported the deal. I'd say conservatives with air quotes because this deal was really perverse in how much money it was giving away. And the whole little tour Amazon did around the country, yeah. getting all the offers from all the cities, that beauty pageant thing. Oh, it shameless. Was shameless. It really yeah. was. Like, yeah. What really city was. is going to roll out the yes. carpet for me and make a helipad for my helicopter? It was, like, it was awful to watch. <laughs> And there's been enough well, bad deals with the whole, you know, Foxconn, Wisconsin. And, like, realistically, oh, a city should seek to have a good infrastructure and moderate taxes so it's appealing for everybody. Be there, not have high taxes, bad infrastructure, and then cut deals to encourage That's somebody it. to be there. You can be the most friendly city or state for business in the world by being low tax and right. low regulation for everybody. And like I tell you, Amazon also may have played a big role in the news even before this announcement because we got the retail sales out for December, and I, it was just a pure freefall, folks. I mean, the biggest drop in a decade. 11 to 13 sectors were hit hard. Sporting goods slammed the most, almost 5%. Healthcare was down 2%. Department store off 3.3 percent but guess what that was better that's right it's shocking but that was better than the nearly four percent plunge in internet sales the largest for them since 2008 now everyone seems to be scratching their heads over this report Aaron what is this report telling us the market was down the weather was bad we had the government shut down like everything for a perfect storm to have retail numbers be off a bit. I think that there's too many variables to really read into this and say, hey, the market's crashing. I think maybe we're slowing down our growth a little bit, but there are just too many things still spending. You know, David, this does, uh, though, go back to the Federal Reserve and their notion of the wealth effect or the psychology of the wealth effect. And maybe the idea is that if you, have, if you somehow trigger a market plunge, that's going to have, that's going to reverberate and actually create the circumstances that you cr that you claim you're trying to avoid in the first place. Well, I would I mean I think the Fed was the leading player in what was stressing markets in December. Let's not forget the trade war either, but we'll talk about that another time. But the fact of the matter is, Charles, that this consumer is not overlevered. And there is nothing that has ever stopped the American consumer from spending other than when they get over leveraged. Right now, wages are still growing very attractively. Unemployment is very low. I have no concern about overall consumer. Now, certain patterns change and are lumpier. I think that's more Aaron's domain than mine. But the fact of the matter is, as far as overall economic growth, I think what you saw was transitory in December because of that sort of wealth effect spook that took place in, in markets. Aaron, I have argued uh, for the last several years that this is a different consumer since the Great Recession, mm -hmm. that they are not getting over their skis. I mean, I, if you look at MasterCard and Visa's numbers that just came out, uh, the pace of spending still greater with debit cards and credit cards, uh, you know, and, and consumers just really seem like they learned a lesson 
the hard way. And I don't know that we get in that, that situation that we were in that led up to the, uh, to the Great Recession. I think you're, you're right for the wrong reason, Charles. I don't think it's because... I take a halfway I, com compliment from David and, any and, day. And, and, and what, honestly, <laughs> what the, I think is going on is that they are afraid to go spend, but not because all of a sudden there's this fiscal discipline because 08 taught them a lesson. It's because they don't have the access to credit that they had pre-crisis. And I think that's a good thing. If you look at the charts, American businesses have relevered post-crisis. The American consumer is not. Pre-crisis, their mortgage payment was 50, 60 percent of their income. It's now way lower. So the consumer is almost just forced into a somewhat more responsible spot. And I think where, where I was joking about you being half right, would the consumer spend more and push themselves back? I they suspect could. they would. Okay. But they can't, and that's Great a good point. thing. Great point. Hey, fantastic conversation. Really appreciate it. Uh, Jonas, David, Aaron, appreciate it. Meanwhile, as Amazon, Amazon says no to New York City, Google says it will invest more than $13 billion across the United States and add thousands of jobs. The company says it's going to be building data centers and offices this year, and they're emphasizing locations in the Midwest and the South. The move away from Silicon Valley may curry favor with Congress, which is paying obviously a lot more attention to Google and these other big tech names uh, of late. President Trump indicating that uh, there may be some breathing room when it comes to the new tariff hikes. David Bonson, tell you he's listening to you. First, a new Fox News poll reveals Americans are split on whether capitalism in the United States gives people like them a fair shot. 47% say yes, 42% say no way. This as the world's tax collectors are trying to find ways to divvy up tech giants' billions. Uh, Amazon, uh, news out that Amazon is paying zero in federal income taxes for the second year in a row. Yeah, uh, David, um, two years in a row, they hadn't paid any, any federal taxes. And, you know, the narrative is that this is one of the richest companies in the world with the richest man in the world. How did they not pay federal income taxes? See, I really think it's important that those of us on the right who are opposed to cronyism, and we talked about it so much in the last segment I was on, uh, but also those of us who defend a low corporate tax rate for everybody, get this right on the Amazon thing. I disagree with the earlier guests that there were all these loopholes as to the reason why they didn't pay taxes last year. The new tax bill got rid of all those loopholes. It left two that I wish it had gotten rid of, but that R&D credit and the low-income housing development credit, they're very difficult to get rid of politically. It's really a handout to Big Pharma on the R&D more than anything else. But those are the only two loopholes that were left. The reason it should be more of a concern to investors than it should be to taxpayers that Amazon didn't pay tax because they don't make real profits. Now, the fact of the matter is here that they did spend a lot of money last year as one-time capital expenditures, and thanks to President Trump's new tax bill, those were fully deductible last year, where in the past it would have to amortize right. it over a long period of time. Right. I don't know why we would be upset about that. That was very stimulative for economic growth. Okay, David. Well, my final thought is just that it's very important that we be consistent in how we approach it. What we want is economic growth, and we don't have to have crony deals to do it. And there's two things that happened today that have Amazon in the news. This thing with New York and Virginia, I completely agree with Beverly. It was cronyism. should not happen. And that was Amazon trying to take taxpayer money. However, them paying little or no tax on the federal rate is simply a byproduct of the tax code. Simplify the entire tax code, let everyone pay their share. But in this particular case, right. Amazon didn't have profits. That's the reason. All right. Hey, John, David, Beverly, thank you all very much.